this uh, Sinometer uh, VC2000 frequency counter. I got this on uh, Amazon. Um, I have it hooked up to my Siglent frequency generator over there on the side. Um, I don't remember if it came with a BNC cable or not. This is my BNC cable and my 50 ohm terminator that I've used with it. It did come with a power cord and it did come with a manual. Manual says uh, Intellective Frequency Counter. Operations Manual. Very, very short. Just a handful of pages. Uh, right now I have it. Uh, I have the the Siglin configured to send a one kilohertz uh, waveform to the frequency counter, which is displaying there is 1.0, and then uh, the last digit is kind of oscillating a little bit between zero and one. Uh, this counter has a total of two jacks. Uh, the bottom jack is for 10 hertz to 50 megahertz. The top jack is for 50 megahertz to 2.4 gigahertz. Um, we can uh, we can set the gate time on it. The gate time is uh, how often it updates the display. Right now I have it set for point one second, which is very quick. If I set it to one second, you'll see it updates slower, but we gain an extra digit of precision. We can go to five or all the way up to ten seconds. At ten seconds, you can see we've gained a lot more digits of precision, but it uh, updates much, much slower. Another couple. There we go. There's, there's a, uh, a good read on our uh, one kilohertz signal. So let me set the gate time back down to 0 0.01. So every time after you've changed a parameter, you got to push the run button. Uh, so I can ramp this up. So there's uh, 10 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz. all the way up to a megahertz. Now there's a total of uh, five different ranges that this thing uh, supports. Um, three of the ranges are frequency ranges. One's a period, one's a crystal oscillator measurement. Uh, you kind of have to memorize um, how the ranges work. So it is it is in the manual. There's a, let me hold that where it can be seen. There's a chart there that specifies them out. So ranges one, two, and three are the frequencies. Range three happens to be the B jack in kilohertz. If we go to range two, that is the B jack in uh, megahertz. So we can keep on going up with this. There I've sent my uh, siglent output 10 megahertz. Um, everything is working kind of as expected bring my siglent up to its maximum of 25 megahertz and that's that's as high as I can go with this frequency generator and then we will uh, we will have to switch to a different uh, frequency generator to, to hit the uh, the higher range on it so here I have it hooked up to my uh, my home built RF generator it goes up to about 107 megahertz so we can use it to uh, to stress this uh, frequency counter a little bit more than I was getting out of my my arbitrary waveform generator, so I've got this set right now for bringing it to close to as 50 as I can tune it with a potentiometer. Got it set to 50.037038 or so. So yeah, it's it's reading 50. So 50 was the top end of uh, um, this B jack down here in the, the range 3. So if we want to go higher, go up to here, we will switch to range 1. And now we should be able to go all the way up to as high as my uh, RF generator goes, which is about 128 megahertz. So yeah, there it's it, it's working. I don't have anything that goes any higher, so I can't uh, test this any further. It says it counts all the way up to 2.4 gigahertz if you had something that would produce uh, produce signals in that range. Okay, so the other thing this does is it has a count mode. The count mode is range four. I've connected my uh, 
arbitrary generator again and set it to output at 10 hertz. And we will see what the count mode does. So it just simply displays a count of the, the, the cycles it's receiving. So this is updating about 10 cycles per second, which is exactly what I set the frequency generator for. So the final thing it has is this uh, crystal oscillator measuring mode. So to do that, you put it in uh, range 5, set the oscillator in kilohertz. You push in the crystal oscillator button, you hit run. Uh, huh. Now this is a 32.768 kilohertz crystal. And it says 147 kilohertz. That does. Yeah, this should be 32.768. Maybe it's not the right kind of crystal. I do have some other crystals. I have a 5 megahertz crystal. If we put this one in. Yeah, that's working. So 5 uh, 5 megahertz. Yeah, so it. It's working with a 5 megahertz crystal. Here's a 12, 12 megahertz crystal. I can rightly know what these things are for. I bought them for some reason. There's a 12 megahertz. Let's see if it can measure that. Yeah, 12 megahertz. don't really like how it just kind of seems kind of sloppy in there. But basically working. Let's uh, look at the rest of the thing. It's overall construction. It's a plastic case. There's an on off switch on the back. It's got some kind of fuse holder, your standard uh, power receptacle. You've got uh, 110 volt versus 220 volt you can select. Overall construction seems, seems to do what it's supposed to do. Okay, now let's, uh, let's take the thing apart and see what's inside of it. Any of those warranty void stickers? I'm going to try just taking the screws loose from the bottom side and seeing if it'll come apart. So one of these is a machine screw, the other's just a, a screw to hold the uh, foot straight on there. I'll bet the machine screw is holding the case halves together. Same thing here, machine screw and metal screw. this part to come out with the bottom. There we go. So it's, uh, it's got some kind of a ground shield on the top there and a ground shield on the bottom. Inside, let's see if I can tell what chips the thing is using. I will zoom in just for anyone who wants to see. And a backside view of the front panel.
Wish we had some more light. There, we can get a close zoom in that way. I took a moment to uh, look at the chips, and here we have an Atmel 89C2051-24PU. Uh, over here we have a 74LS373. Uh, here is a 74HC393N. Uh, 74 F 74 74 HC 153 an Atmel 93 C 46 and an LM 393 this here is a 7805 regulator on the heatsink I don't really know what's uh, what's inside of these cans because they're soldered down and I don't really want to take them apart the transformer is uh, 9 volt. Um, not really going to bother with looking at the front panel. So this particular small can here was not soldered down on one side so I was able to kind of pry it up. And what we can see in there is uh, some kind of a crystal and uh, glued to it is uh, a three terminal semiconductor of some place. I don't know, I would guess a temperature sensor, but you know, it's got the white gunk all over it, you can't really tell. Now, I'd sure like to get in there and look at it, but I don't really want to tear it apart. So it will uh, remain a mystery. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.